So after lots of hard work playing GTA 5, you finally make a big strike on a security truck. Now all you gotta do is collect the money. That, up we go, fine. up we go, here we go. Oh good, we've got some money to invest now. Okay, we've hit this company, but uh, what can we do? There are a lot of different alternatives, a lot of different investments or things you can spend on. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, show you some low-risk investment strategies that I've used that uh, work uh, specifically for this game. And how that goes about, you might ask, is, uh, well, uh, let us take a look at the LCN uh, Stock Exchange. Okay, we see the big movers and shakers. Now let's uh, look at, uh, you know, pretty much every single stock that's uh, listed there. If you'll notice, there are low price stocks and there are high price stocks. But if you think a little bit more, you might notice that uh, none of the stocks are like over a thousand bucks. I mean, this one was at one point. And, uh, you know, none of the stocks seem to drop below like 343 or somewhere around there so you know around 350 just a little bit below that per share uh, also if you notice from looking at these charts uh, all the movements of the stocks appear to be uh, completely random So basically, the three things that uh, we've noticed are going to guide our investment strategy, and that is uh, stock price movement is totally random in this game. Uh, the highest price stock was listed at a thousand bucks a share. That's the ceiling. Uh, floor is lowest priced at about three forty-three. Okay, so let's think about this on another level here. Uh, the lowest price stock was 343, obviously. None of the stocks drop below that price. None of the stocks in this game go bankrupt. So the real question here is how do we take advantage of that? And uh, basically uh, that floor gives us very limited downside uh, if we're buying a low price stock. We know it can only go to like 343 or something around there. Uh, so we can uh, pile in to the lowest price penny stocks with a little risk on the downside because we know it can't go much lower. We can dollar cost average into that. And uh, we potentially have upside if it ever actually changes direction. So, knowing all this, uh, the first step in my investment strategy, based on how the markets work in this game, not real life, of course, is to basically build a position in the two to three lowest priced uh, stocks. And uh, after we build a position, it's going to get tricky uh, because we're going to want to occasionally rebalance when prices change. We don't necessarily want to move completely out of a position, but we want to uh, rebalance. Uh, and basically, we are going to try to dollar cost average or dollar cost averaging into our positions. So our average cost, uh, like say we buy a stock at four bucks and it goes down to three fifty. If we keep averaging in at three fifty and we build a bigger position, our average cost is going to be you know slightly higher than three fifty, but way less than four bucks. And when the stock does turn around and take off uh, we'll have a small t uh, maybe a small profit or a, a large one depending on on what happens potentially uh, you know high positive return but uh, in in this situation we've got uh, low negative percentage returns and uh, occasionally high positive uh, percentage returns most of the time it's not going to work like that it's going to be a low a low return and then you'll, you'll pile it into the next low stock but then again we're not losing a ton of money with this strategy and that's that's what we're trying to do low risk so there's no hard or fast rule in how you do this but let's say for example uh, stock goes up you could sell maybe 
20 to 40 percent of the position because you don't know if it's going to go up more or going to go down uh, but if you you sell some of the position you'll have cash or cash in another stock where if that uh, stock that you sold uh, goes up well there's going to be no worries on your part because you still have you know the part that you didn't sell and if that stock goes down after it's run up well you've got capital you can buy back more shares at a lower price uh, you know the old uh, buy low sell high or sell high buy low uh, that's that's how you make money in the markets of course so basically uh, what you want to do is keep building positions in the lowest price stocks Let's take an example of how this might look here. Uh, we have a prolapse and uh, you know we might start buying over here. We don't know if it's gonna go up or down. In this case, it goes down, uh, we buy more. If it goes up, we just hang on to it, maybe sell a little bit. Uh, it goes down a little more, uh, we buy more again and it drops again, so we buy more. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we are trying to build a position by dollar cost averaging in on the downside and of course, when the stock eventually moves up, we will sell some of it, maybe a third quarter, whatever. And if it, it moves down against us, we'll uh, buy more and rebuild the position on, on price drops. Uh, we want to have a low risk uh, strategy due to the price floor. I think it's in the 340s. Uh, but, you know, it has upside whenever the, the stock actually moves in our direction. It might take a while, but it has upside. Now let's take a look at uh, one way I might play this uh, when, when I'm playing through two different equities. And that's uh, basically I want to try to build positions in the, the lowest of the two stocks and move money around between them uh, depending on cash flow. So in the case of Moore's Mutual Insurance, I'll start buying at that spot. And when it goes up, I'll slowly sell out and I'll hold on to the position if it goes up. And if it goes down, I'll, I'll of course, uh, add to it and buy more. And if it goes up again, uh, I'll slowly sell out of the position, you know, a, a small percentage of the, of the position. Uh, basically, you know, uh, I'm trying to build a position uh, and uh, I'm doing that by dollar cost averaging on the downside. And of course, when the stock moves up, I'm going to slowly take some of my profits and sell out, or at least that's the theory behind it. Let's take a look at uh, how that actually worked in a game I was playing. Uh, here's the prolapse. I have actually a pretty decent sized position over a hundred thousand shares there. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for a quick strike, hoping for a quick strike. And then lo and behold, I'm already down like 40, quite a bit. Uh, you know, I keep hanging around, I get a small profit and then I, I sell some of that off and I invest the proceeds in another stock. So I'm playing too. And the next thing you know, I'm getting walloped. I've got both positions getting completely crushed. Uh, then I, I decide uh, to take the, the highest of the two and sell and then buy more in the lowest of the two. And uh, yeah, not looking good, not looking good. So yeah, I'm a little frustrated at this point, but I'm gonna stick to my strategy. I'm gonna stick to my strategy. I stick it out, I hold out, and eventually it turns. And then the next thing you know, I got this decent sized profit. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, with that profit, I, I try to stick to my strategy and, and sell out just in case, uh, you know, the price drops, I can build a bigger position. Uh, and if it, you know, if it doesn't drop that, that's good too, because I'll, I'll get a, a larger profit. Uh, but I'll still have uh, more capital uh, to play. Uh, and then again, you know, like I said, the, the reason you're, you're selling some of it is so because you don't know which way the stock's going to move. Number one, and number two, of course, you are dollar cost averaging, you know, to try to build up a position to take advantage of some of that upside when it does uh, move in your favor. Uh, yeah, so that, that pretty much wraps up uh, this extensive, complicated strategy. I am signing out. Uh, thank you for watching.